Are you depressed about the camera market's shrinking sales, increased prices, or general lack of availability? You're probably not going to like this video. More details coming up. But first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear news and rumors. The Japanese used to love their cameras. And Japan is still the center of the camera universe with all the top camera makers still based in Japan. Canon, Nikon, Sony, Pentax, Olympus, and Panasonic all still make their cameras in Japan. And top third-party makers like Tamron and Sigma are also based in Japan. So it comes as a complete surprise to hear that the Japanese have, well, tired of using their cameras, simply leaving it on the shelf for show like a vintage Mac in a Seinfeld episode, serving no other purpose other than a prop of what once used to be. In a recent survey, 41.8% said that they still owned a camera. That's 42% of the market. That's significantly down from 10 years ago. And today in a market where we're lucky to push 5 million units a year, it's staggering. And when I say 41.8%, I'm talking about people that still own film cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless, ILC, and non-ILC cameras. But the big news, and I'm talking capital B-I-G, really big news is that 37% haven't used their camera in the last year. Can you imagine that, not using your camera in the last year? And the numbers get even worse. 58.5%, a majority of those that own cameras in Japan, 58.5% haven't used their camera in the last year. This is staggering. We're coming to the end of June, and if you look at the past six months, it covers some of the biggest holidays in the year. And I'm not talking about Christmas, Boxing Day, and New Year's, Western holidays, I'm talking about Japanese holidays. Let's take a look at some of the holidays that have passed in Japan over the last six months. 58.5% haven't used their camera in the last six months. That means they haven't used their camera on New Year's Day, National Foundation Day, Doll Festival Day, Vernon Equinox Day, Constitution Day, Green Day, and Children's Day, just to name a few. And yes, I have left a few out. Here's a closer look at the numbers. 37% haven't used their camera at all in a year. And for those that use it just once, picked it up, maybe they just changed the battery, maybe they just looked through the LCD, maybe they didn't even take a picture, that's 8.8%. 12.7% have used it once in the last six months, 11.8% just once in the last three months, with 11.5% once in just a month. But here's the big news here. Only 5.4% have used their camera in the last week. Wow, these are really staggering numbers, and I love numbers, I love statistics, but let's recap some of the big numbers here. 58.5% of the Japanese market that own cameras haven't used them in the last six months, covering off some of the major holidays in that culture. 58.5% haven't used them. But that last number that I talked about, 5.4% of the market, of people that own cameras, have only used it once in the last week. You know why that's significant to me? People who use their cameras every day or at least once in the last week are professionals. These are people who use cameras for their business. To have used it only once in the last week, that tells me that of the Japanese market, those that own cameras, only about 5.5% of the marketplace is catering to professional users, professional photographers, videographers that use stills hybrid cameras. 5.5%. Now that might start to explain a couple of things. I hear this a lot in comments, people saying, why don't camera companies just produce a stills only camera? Why do they keep going after all these features that the ordinary average person wants? Why do they keep putting in tons of video features? Why can't they just give us X camera? Why don't they just focus on professionals, photographers and videographers? Well, I think these numbers kind of let us know that in their own home market, where only 42% of the marketplace has a camera of some sort, 58.5% of them don't use a camera, but maybe once every year. And of that again, same market, only about 5.5% of them use a camera once a week. I wanna put that into stark, a stark reality for you. I shoot on this channel, and in fact, I have only done probably two videos in the last week because it's been relatively slow. But do you know how many times I've used my camera this week alone? Probably four or five times. I'm always using it. And even on those days where I don't use it, I feel a little bit guilty. I come down here, I look at the camera and, you know, I check for dust. I check to see if everything looks okay. And maybe I'll go check batteries, charge batteries. I check everything on the shelf here, make sure everything's in place. 
And as a professional, I can't imagine that you're not using your camera maybe once a day for five days out of those seven. Once a week, 5.4%. That those are some pretty significant numbers. And if we look at ILC camera sales, a mirrorless cameras were around 5 million units as of 2021. When I first saw these numbers this morning, because I was looking to see if there was a video to do, there hasn't been a whole lot of news. And I hate covering those stories where, okay, we're rumored to be getting a couple of lenses for the RFS mount, but there's no details. It's how do I stretch a five or even three minute video talking about two lenses where there's no details. I can't do that. I just can't get up there and get excited over what is essentially nothing. But when I saw this, I thought, wow, there's some pretty big numbers here. 58.5% haven't used their camera in the last six months. That's a really big deal. Now, I use my camera quite often, both professionally for this channel, but also for fun stuff, or I should say fun and gun, where I go for hikes, I take my son, and I'm one of those guys that always has his camera around his neck, and people are saying, oh, where are you going? What are you up to? I said, oh, we're just going for a walk. Why are you taking your camera with you? Well, duh, to take photos, to take videos, to capture a moment, because you never know when you're going to miss that moment. And the two times that I recall where I didn't take my camera, there were some pretty big deals, some pretty amazing things that happened, and I didn't have the camera to capture it. And no, it wasn't a UFO sighting or anything like that. i am always got my camera with me. It's rare that I don't take it out with me. And if I don't take it out with me, I do put a smartphone in my pocket just in case. But I love capturing those moments. And then later on, once I've had a chance to relax and wind down, I then look at the footage, I start to process it. And it's just truly amazing what I'm able to do with these professional level cameras. I love photography, I love videography. And even though I don't shoot stills very often, and I don't quite often, I'm happy to pull a frame from video because I'm shooting an 8K over sample 4K and it's good enough for, well, social media, Instagram, Facebook, or sending it to my wife over iMessage. But when I do shoot, when I do shoot with the R5 with 45 megapixels, and wow, it's just incredible. When I put on the 100 to 500 millimeter RF, the 50 millimeter F1.2, the 100 millimeter F8 2. Point, or sorry, let's try that again. The 100 millimeter F2.8 macro, or even just the 24 to 105 F4, it's, I'm searching, I'm hoping to capture something. I don't mind having the camera around my neck because it captures reality because as time goes by, as I go back over the last 10, 20, 30, and even 40 years, not only do I start to forget memories, but those memories change over time. And I'm thankful that when I was in college some, well, 30 years ago now, I've got tons of photographs of me in college with some of my friends. And yes, they were captured on 35 millimeter. They weren't the best cameras at the time. They were simple point and shoot cameras. The quality wasn't great, but I've still got those memories and I'm excited by that. And it brings back so many positive things. I start thinking of the music of the times and what we did and what was fun. I don't remember so much of what I was taught in the classes in college, although yes, it's still with me. It's been changed and that information has been updated. But memories of my friends, memory of my experiences, I don't want those memories updated with age. I want to remember them as they were. I want to remember the smells and the sounds. And I love using a camera. Now, maybe you're watching this video and you're one of those people that hasn't used your camera in a month, maybe three months or maybe even six months. And maybe it's sitting on a shelf collecting dust as a prop to what once used to be. I encourage you, if you're not using your camera on a regular basis, go ahead and pull the camera off the shelf, check the battery, put in new batteries, charge the battery, put in a fresh SD card and get out there and shoot. Go on a walk, use your camera as an excuse to get out there. You're tired, you're bored, you can't really go anywhere or you don't wanna get on planes because of these wait times and everything that's going on and airports are crammed, jets are crammed, jets are being canceled, all sorts of things, right? Use your camera, go for a walk, just try to capture stuff in your own backyard. There's so much to see. Go on walks and trails, maybe go on a day trip, get in the car, drive someplace, take your camera with you with a challenge to yourself and a vision of what you wanna capture and what you wanna do because it's fun. When I got my Canon 50D oh so many years ago, I also got a Corvette. It was a 2008 Corvette where the top came off and quite often those two kinda of went hand in hand. I thought, you know, 
it's been about 20 years since my father took me to Whiteface Mountain or Mount Washington in, uh, I think Mount Washington's in New Hampshire and Whiteface Mountain's in New York. And I thought, let's go there. I took my camera, took a friend, and I shot a lot of stills. And I want to go back there again sometime soon and take my son and show him the marvels of the Adirondacks, Whiteface Mountain, Mount Washington. And to me, a camera is a way to get me out there to experience and enjoy life, to challenge myself to get new updated photos with new updated people. Take a friend, take your child, take your spouse, your girlfriend, your granddad, your grandmother, I don't know, someone, insert someone significant other. Cameras are fun. And not in the way that, you know, it's like driving a sports car. It's fun because it captures those moments for later. And I get it. Maybe you haven't used it in a year and you're afraid because a lot of times when you take out your camera, you don't produce great shots because you haven't used it in a while. Then don't be afraid to use the automatic modes. Use the automatic modes until you're ready to move into manual mode. And you'll know when you're ready because you'll look at the automatic and say, oh, I wish I could have done this. And then you'll learn, oh, let's Google. How do I do that? And before you know it, you start moving into AV priority, TV priority, before you move finally on to manual. This is not a video about big news and rumors out in the camera market. It's about what's changing to our market, to our hobby, to our profession. Cameras are a lot of fun. And maybe, just maybe, you've forgotten that a little bit because there's got to be more than 5.4% of us that actually want to use the camera at least once a week. Or more than, what is this number here? Only about 11.8% that have used our camera in the last six months. 12% in the last six months. We should be able to pick that number up quite a bit. And I know these are numbers from the Japanese market, but still, this is the place where all the major Japanese camera companies are based, where they manufacture their equipment. If the Japanese are seeing numbers like this, what is it like here? And hold on a second here, because I actually did a poll not too long ago, literally not that long ago. It was only about an hour ago. And I want to see what you guys are telling me. So I put out a poll and I asked the same question. In my use of mirrorless and DSLR camera, how often have I used it? Once a week, once every three months, once every six months, or once a year, or I've stopped using it completely. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise because this is coming from you, my viewers, my subscribers. And maybe this will make you feel a little bit better, but those that have used it once in the last week, at least once in the last week, 76%. Take that, Japan. 76% of my users, no surprising though, no surprises because if you're interested in cameras, you're on, you're watching, you're reading, you're learning, you're researching, you're shooting. So 76% have used it at least once in the last week. Once in the last month, another 14%. So 90% of my viewers or people you watching YouTube that came across this poll, 90% have used their camera at least once in the last month. Now that to me is much more encouraging. And of course, 0% in the last three months, 8% have used it only once in the last six months. And those that have basically stuck it on a shelf or haven't used it in the last year, a mere 2%. Now that's only out of 49 votes. And if I do a refresh here, we're now up to how many votes? 53 votes, see, just in a few seconds. And the numbers, have they changed? Well, yes, they have changed a little bit. Still 74% in the last week and 15% in the last month. I will update you on this poll, but you want to check it out on my community page to see how this evolves. Remember, that Japanese poll is looking at everybody that owns a camera in Japan. Film cameras, like the EOS One, DSLRs like the Canon 5D, as well as mirrorless cameras, both ILCs and non-ILCs, point and shoot, a camera, a digital camera. 42% of the market owns one, but of that entire market that owns a camera, only 5.5% of that market has actually used their camera at least once in the last week. And 58.5% have used it. Probably haven't used it for six months. And that really is a big deal because those are the numbers that we're facing. And that's why a couple of years ago when I said this market is ripe for consolidation for mergers and acquisitions because the market keeps shrinking. And yes, there's always excuses, right? We can always say, well, look at the chip shortage. Look at the resource constraints in the marketplace. Look at, well, everything that's going down. And you know, there's so many things on the tip of your tongue that you can insert into this conversation as to why. But regardless of the reason, since around 2011, when the market was at its peak, 
year after year, it's declining. And yes, that decline seems to be straightening out a little bit, but declining it is. And I think it's people just not picking up their cameras. And I get it because of the smartphone, right? The smartphone is the biggest reason. But you see, a smartphone, they do things very, very well. It has a calculator. You can do spreadsheets. You can do word processing on it. Not the best. You can do it. You can track your activity. You can track cycling. You can track your hiking. You can track all sorts of things. You can browse the web. You can watch movies. You can listen to music. They really do a lot of things very, very well. And with computational photography, they do a pretty good job, but they don't do a great job. But I think for a lot of people, a lot of moms and dads, you know, if you're looking at spending around a thousand dollars on a smartphone and it does have stills and videos and you're, it's with you all the time and you snap a shot, sure, it's not the best quality, but it captures that memory. It captures that moment. Just like all those photos I have from back when I was in college, I look at them now and the video quality wasn't very good. Neither was the stills quality. And yes, I do wish they were better. But for a lot of people, smartphones are kind of taking over. And if you're one of those people that you've kind of let the smartphone take over, I challenge you to take out your camera, go out there and shoot shots. Even with these standard, where is it here? The kit lenses like this 18 to 105 USM lens uh, that I put on my 70D and I used it for years, it still will produce better results than a smartphone. And if you just spend a little bit of time and learn a little bit more, you'll be amazed at the quality you'll be able to get. And when it comes to video, smartphones are terrible. Low light performance, they're absolutely terrible. I did this in a test last year when I was doing a review of the Weeble. They are absolutely terrible. Low light performance, they don't have that computational programming that works for video. It's absolutely terrible in a low light performance, but a simple camera like the Canon 70D, which can probably be purchased for around two to $200 today, can produce better video quality than a lot of modern smartphones. Now in beautiful sunlight, like it is right outside right now at 88 degrees, sure, the smartphones are gonna do well, but if you haven't been using your camera and you've been favoring your smartphone, I encourage you to go out there and do a bit of a challenge for yourself. Can your smartphone produce better? Or can your camera produce better? And I'm willing to bet the camera can. That's enough of my rant. If you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, go ahead and subscribe. But please choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, it ensures that as soon as I publish a video like this or the latest news and rumors, YouTube will notify you so you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. That's it for now. Have yourself a very good weekend and take out your camera and your favorite lens and go challenge yourself. Have a good time. We'll see you again soon.